I basically asked musicians, what should I do in lieu of actually taking any lessons or anything? Because that really was all that was available to me. My parents didn't put me through lessons or anything. From an early age, I really had to just listen. And that's really how I learned how to play music. I listened to the records and I listened to the radio. The music teacher, the piano player that showed up at my door, didn't really know anything besides Mary Had a Little Lamb and other little ditties that you would teach children. You know, he wasn't any sort of professional player, just a teacher who was trying to make extra money on the side. I was asking him to teach me jazz comping, how someone like John Lewis of the Modern Jazz Quartet could play the chords on one hand and the solos on another. That is one of the reasons why I studied jazz later. And I started out on bass, even though the first instrument that I tinkered around with was a guitar. It was an old acoustic guitar that I found in my garage. The first instrument that my mother encouraged me to play was bass because she wanted me to understand the construction of music. If you learn how to play the instruments that reside within the bass clef, then you won't have much of a problem converting to treble clef. Then you'll understand the nature of comping within any style whatsoever. When I asked him, hey, can you teach me what I'm hearing on modern jazz quartet albums? He didn't understand it himself because he wasn't a bass player and he really didn't ever consider the importance of learning the bass clef instruments. That's what the left hand is playing when you're considering jazz comping and how it's achieved on piano. I have so greatly appreciated the music of John Coltrane and Miles Davis and also other jazz greats like Cannonball Adderley, John McLaughlin, George Benson, Wes Montgomery, and Charlie Christian. Charlie Christian, of course, played guitar for Benny Goodman. If you listen to Charlie Christian, you'll actually hear the early use of octaves as well. The octave type playing that Wes Montgomery later revolutionized. If you immerse yourself within it, you can probably learn more about theory that way because you're learning, in essence, to use your entire neck. So you could basically construct solos using your entire neck by simply utilizing both octaves. So I'm playing off of the low one. And then I start playing off the high one. Then you start building a lot of harmonies. I was asking a music teacher in high school just to show me something, just to teach me something, anything. When I asked him, hey, what can you show me without writing it down, without playing it? What can you tell me about music that I should remember when I'm playing guitar and I'm playing leads, improvising? Among other things, he actually told me to stay away from the root notes. So to stay away from the one, basically. There are so many possibilities once you begin to expand your playing. You don't want to play within any real set pattern, but you want to create your own patterns. It does take some time to get used to, physically. We're wired to expect the root note at certain times. If you listen to certain types of music that have been popular, you're hearing notes that are played at the expected times. In jazz and more esoteric forms of music, you'll want to throw all of that supposed science out the window. Check this out. hear where all of the chords would fit. You can hear where all of the changes would go. But if you're going to play in a more esoteric way, in a more adventurous way, you have to allow the chords to exist within the imagination of the listener. That's the chord form. I won't play as many root notes as would be expected. rhythm guitar is so important because you won't, when you begin to improvise, forget where you are. And that's something that I always stress, making sense within your playing. I understand that it's about being as free as possible. But in order to actually be free, you have to know exactly where you are in the sequence. Think about losing your place in the solo and then having to find your way back. 
to where everyone else is. Well, that's not really freedom. You're really kind of chaining yourself to the cords at that point. You're really chaining yourself to the structure. And when you're considering how to become a better guitar player, one of the things that you don't want to do is chain yourself to structure. Hi, this is Marcus Singletary. Please subscribe to my channel.